Well, again, as I said at the beginning, and as you could tell uh, from uh, the baptistry open behind me, we have the privilege today of uh, witnessing the baptisms of uh, two who are coming to share their testimonies and those who want to make it known to everyone that they are committed uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Brother Sawyer and Pam. And uh, as I said, after my sermon today, they're going to come up and share their testimonies and uh, follow the Lord's command in this uh, amazing ordinance of, of baptism. And so as we prepare uh, to witness their baptisms, uh, I really can't think of a more fitting day uh, for us to do a baptism, really, than uh, on Thanksgiving Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, because really, what could possibly, what, we, what could we possibly be more thankful than for what baptism represents, amen? Couldn't be more thankful for the grace of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a really fitting day for us to, to have a baptism. And so the title of our sermon today is very simply, we're pushing the pause button on Ephesians. We'll come back to that next week, but Thanksgiving through baptism. Thanksgiving through baptism. And so as is my tradition, uh, whenever we have a baptism, I want to take a few minutes and at least get into a little bit of what believer's baptism means and why we do it as a church. Obviously, you're in a Baptist church, so it's really important to us. But uh, also being that it is Thanksgiving Sunday, uh, I want us to show us from the scriptures how believer's baptism ties into a heart of gratefulness, how believer's baptism ties into a heart of thanksgiving, uh, which again is what this whole week represents. And so we're going to attempt to do both of those things today with starting out with point number one, uh, that baptism is a sign of obedience and thanks for Christ. And so if you have your Bibles, grab them with me today. We're going to be jumping around. Uh, it'll be up on your screen, but uh, it's always good for you to follow along in your own copy of the text of Scripture. Matthew chapter 28, familiar verses. Matthew chapter 28, looking at verses 19 and 20. Jesus speaking here said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of this age. This is God's word. So as we know, we're familiar with these verses. These verses are known as Christ's Great Commission. And uh, they remind us, as we read them, just from a plain reading, that baptism is not a suggestion, okay? Baptism isn't just a religious tradition that we came up with one day in order to call ourselves Baptists, okay? Baptism is a command. It is an imperative from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And thus, because it is a command from the Lord Jesus Christ, we follow that command as a way to publicly proclaim our, our faith in him as a way to publicly d display that we are disciples, to publicly display our obedience as proof that we are disciples. And you have to ask yourself a question is, why is that so important? Why is it so important that others know? Why is it so important that I publicly demonstrate my obedience to Jesus Christ as, as a Christian? Well, the answer to that is because obedience to Christ, that's the natural response of our heart. It's a natural response of a heart that's thankful to be transformed by the gospel, by Christ. Because when we experience the grace of God, we talked about God's grace last week, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. When we experience that miraculous grace of God, when we understand all that Jesus Christ did for us, we don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted, but rather we're thankful for it. And through that thankfulness, our desire is to do what Christ has commanded to honor Jesus Christ with, with all that we have out of that heart of love, out of that heart of gratitude for everything that he has done for me. Jesus said it himself in John 14, 15, right? He said, if you love me, you're going to do what? I know I quote it all the time. If you love me, you're going to obey my commands, right? You're going to keep my commands. And so following the Lord by going through this behind me, following the Lord by going through believer's baptism, that, that command of Christ, it's an act of obedience. And indeed, it's an act of thankfulness for Jesus. It's a way to show everyone just how thankful you are for all that God has done for you. And so tying that in into Thanksgiving today, after our service, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to take time over in the family center, take time to pass around the mic. 
We're going to take time for you to be able to share something that the Lord has laid on your heart, something that you're thankful for. And again, I, I challenge you to be prepared for that. Okay, let's not have there be a lot of dead time. Let's have more, more passing around and sharing than as possible, all right? But, but it's, again, it's fitting that we start that time of testimony with this, amen? It's fitting that we start that time of testimony through the means of believer's baptism because, again, obedience to Jesus through the ordinance of baptism, that's one of the greatest ways that we can display our gratefulness, our gratefulness for his love, his, our gratefulness for his, for his grace to us in him. You know, by being baptized, what you're essentially saying to everyone is, Lord, I am thankful for you. Lord, I am thankful for all that you've done in my life. I'm thankful for Christ. I'm thankful that you didn't leave me in my sin. I'm thankful that you didn't leave me in my despair. I'm thankful that, that I'm saved, that I'm going to heaven. And I want the entire world to know that through the obedience that I am about to display by being baptized. And as well as the other areas of my life, because I got news for you that baptism is just the first command, okay? They all get a little bit harder from there, all right? Baptism is the easiest. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says this, Paul writes, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, just as you were taught, and then he rounds that out by saying, abounding in thanksgiving, abounding in thankfulness. And so through baptism today, both Sawyer and Pam, they are publicly thanking God. That's what they're doing. They're thanking God for saving them, thanking God for transforming their lives, for, for giving them this salvation. And, and so that should translate to all of us here, all of us here today who know Jesus as our Savior, those of us who have received the grace of God, who God has blessed us, who have been saved by the grace of God in Jesus Christ. It's a reminder for us to live with a heart of thankfulness. Amen? with thankful hearts for all that he has done for us. And so just as in a few minutes, they're going to come up here and they're going to declare publicly their gratitude for all that Jesus has done for them. He reminds us every day to say thank you. It reminds us every single day when you wake up, every single day to say thank you, Lord. If you're in him today, if you know him as your savior, thank you, Lord, for giving me life. But Lord, thank you for giving me new life in Christ. Amen. Thank you, God, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, as the old hymn writer put it. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Amen? That's what it is. And so, thank you, Lord, for making, making me your child. And so, and so, believer's baptism, it's that first step of obedience. It's that first step of obedience for the Christian life, which is a public declaration. It's a public declaration for that thankfulness that the Christian has in Jesus Christ. But we also learn from Scripture, point number two, that baptism also shows thankfulness for a new life in Christ, a new life in Christ. Turn with me in your Bibles, turn over from Matthew, over to your right to Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6. Again, we're jumping around, I know it's not my practice, usually we're in one text, but Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, Paul writes, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And so what we find from those verses is, is that baptism is meant to be a symbol Baptism is symbolic of something inward that has happened in the life of the individual. It's, it's symbolic of, of a major change that has happened in that person's life. And so major, so significant that according to these verses, it's like the difference between life and death. That's the significant change that has happened. Baptism symbolizes that the person who is coming for baptism has been brought from spiritual death to newness of life to spiritual life. Baptism symbolizes that the person, as we talked about last Sunday from Ephesians chapter 2, has been born again. Amen? That's what it symbolizes, okay? And so believer's baptism, it's kind of like, as I said at the beginning, it's kind of like a visual sermon. Every time we do a baptism, it's like a visual sermon. It's an object lesson, God's object lesson in many ways. Picture of the meaning of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a picture of what it means to be a true Christian, according to Paul, when somebody goes under the waters of baptism, it says, having been baptized, it symbols, it symbolizes being buried. 
buried with Christ into his death, is what the verses state. Buried into his death. And so just as Christ, after his death upon the cross, just as he was put in the ground after his death, so too is that person proclaiming to everyone that I am symbolically, spiritually speaking, my old self, it is now dead. It is being buried. It's being locked away in that grave, in the ground symbolically. The baptism symbolizes, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, Right? Old things have passed away. Old things have died. They've been put in the ground. And all things have become new. And that new creation that he speaks of here, that newness of life, as he says in Romans, uh, that's symbolized when that person doesn't stay in the water, right? We don't leave them in the water, hopefully, right? I don't hold you down. I promise I won't do that, Sawyer and Pam. I promise I won't do that. But when they come up out of the water, right? They come up out of the water, and so just as Jesus did not stay dead in the ground, but he was raised three days later, when the Christian, when they come up out of that water, it represents being raised with Christ, raised to walk in newness of life. That's why I say that. You know, I say, I, I say this every time I baptize somebody, you know, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in the newness of life. You'll hear me say that this morning, right? Represents the fact that God has done a miracle in my heart represents the fact that God has done that transforming work of the gospel that only he can do. Represents that I'm no longer going to live in deadness. I'm not going to live in that spiritual deadness and decay. Rather, I'm going to live in spiritual life. I'm going to live in the newness of life. I'm going to live as a born-again Christian. And so, and so thank, uh, uh, baptism, it's just a beautiful expression of thanksgiving. It's a beautiful expression for thanksgiving for that new life that he's given me in Christ, right? That's what it represents. It's a public declaration that I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for his love. I'm thankful for his mercy. I'm thankful for his grace, his power that transformed me from a spiritual dead man to newness of life. That I am now alive in Jesus Christ. It's a way of saying thank you to God that by your grace alone, I don't need to live in spiritual deadness anymore. I don't need to live in my sin. I don't need to live in that. I don't need to live in despair. I don't need to live in depression. I don't need to live in fear anymore. Right? Rather, through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, my old life, all of those things that encompass my old life, they are dead they are put in the ground. They have died. They have been buried. But I have been resurrected, just like Jesus Christ. I have been resurrected spiritually to walk in this new life. And that new life of hope, right? The new life of peace. I say it all the time to you. A peace that passes understanding, right? It's a peace that you can only get through the gospel of Jesus Christ. A, a, a new life of joy. all Leaving behind all of my former self and clinging to Jesus Christ alone. And folks, that is something that every single one of you in this room, if you've experienced the new birth, if you have experienced what the gospel is, if you know that your sins have been buried in the ground, but that you have been raised to walk spiritually in newness of life, if you have been born again today, that is something every one of us can amen and say, thank you, Lord, for. Amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God for that. And so believer's baptism, it reminds us to be thankful as I said, for what Jesus did for us. It's a reminder to be thankful for who he has made us in the newness of life that he has granted to us. But finally, point number three, we see that baptism also displays thankfulness for the body, for the body of Christ. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Again, it'll be up on your screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says this, for in one spirit, we, speaking of the church, Christians, we were all baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slave and free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. And, and so finally, what this verse teaches us is that believer's baptism, it's not just a personal thing between you and God, Okay? It's not just me and Jesus and that's all that I need. No, it is a communal act. It's communal. When somebody is baptized, they're identifying with Christ individually. Yes, Christ has saved me, but they're also identifying with the rest of his people who have also been raised to walk in newness of life, right? They're, they've been, they're, they're identifying with 
his people, with his body, as, as he is called here in this text, with his church. And so what that complete immersion, why we immerse completely in the water and don't just sprinkle, there's a lot of reasons for that, but one of them is, is, that, is that we're immersing ourselves in Christ, we're immersed in that newness of life, to raise, to walk in the newness of life, but it also symbolizes the complete immersion into the family of God, the universal family of God, the church. And that's the reason why believer's baptism normally is, is to precede church membership in the local church. Because, again, it's that, about that immersion into the body of Christ. It symbolizes that. It symbolizes that I'm a part of something. That, that, I, am a, that I no longer have to do the Christian life on my own. That I'm, I'm a part of something that is bigger than me. All right? that, that, that no matter what my... I mean, it talks about Jew, Greek... Slave or free, that no matter what my background, doesn't matter my background, doesn't matter my age, doesn't matter my race, it doesn't matter my social status, doesn't, rem- doesn't matter all those things, that I am a part of a body, amen? That's what I'm a part of. I'm a part of God's people, that through the Spirit of God and through his miraculous work in bringing that person to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they are now united with everyone else who has had that same miraculous experience, that, that, that they are united with that with that body of believers that has experienced what it means to be born again, that they're a part of the family of God, all right? And that communal aspect of believer's baptism, that's why it's so closely linked to the second ordinance. Jesus gave two ordinances, believer's baptism and, and communion, rightly called communion, the Lord's table, so closely linked to those two, because what is communion? Well, communion simply means fellowship, simply means sharing, sharing with others, and, and thus to have true communion, whether that is to partake of the actual ordinance of communion, which, by the way, we'll be partaking of that next Sunday, but whether to actually partake of communion or just to have communion in a generic sense of the word, you can't do it by yourself, right? You can't have communion by yourself, all right? You can't have fellowship by yourself. You can't share as the definition of the word goes. You can't share if you don't have anyone to share with. And so just as the ordinance of communion, it can't be partaken of rightly anyways without the other members of the church family, so too I would argue is true of baptism. And why is that? Well, because just as every month we eat of the same bread and we drink of the same broken body, the cup of Christ as a church family, so too, according to this text, are we all baptized into how many bodies? Individual bodies? No, no baptized into one body. Amen? We are baptized into one body, and so we baptize publicly. We baptize in front of other Christians and in front of other people, not in private. It would be very easy to take them and bring them down the road and baptize them privately, right? But we don't do it privately, right? We don't do it in private because it shows those being baptized, those Pam and, and Sawyer, as well as the rest of us who are here today who witnessed that baptism, that we are connected with them. That we are a part of the body of Christ together. That we have a connection. That we have unity. That we have a relationship with them as a family of believers. That we're together with them. Amen? That's what it's all about. That we're a family. I know I say this often, but we are a church family. Amen? That's what we are. We need to, we need to strive for that. We don't do the Christian life alone. We don't. This is the reason why church membership is so very, very important for you. If you're not a member of a local church, you should be a part of a local church. You should be a member of a local church. It's not a matter of just putting your name on a list and saying, okay, yeah, I'm a part. No, it's because we're a family. To be officially a part of that family, to, to do what Galatians talks about, bear one another's burdens, to share in each other's joys and each other's sorrows, right? To be able to be there for one another, to love one another no matter what. That we're here for one another, to help one another through both the good times and to celebrate, to, to celebrate in the good times and to be with each other during the bad times. That's what it means to be a part of a family. That is what it means to be a part of a church family. And that right there, your church family, that's something to be thankful for. Amen? Thank the Lord for Eastford Baptist Church. Amen? Praise God for that. And so, so that is what it represents. And so as we prepare for these baptisms today, I know it's a short sermon today. But I pray that we would all walk away with a heart of thankfulness today. Every one of us. Not just because it's Thanksgiving. Not just because this is what we're supposed to do this week. But because of what this amazing ordinance that we are about to witness represents. That we would all walk away more thankful today because of Christ. 
that we would be propelled in our thankfulness to know him more and to serve him more, right? That we would walk in the newness of life that he has given us, to be thankful that, that I have a new life. I no longer have to live in my sin. I don't have to live in deadness. I don't have to live in despair. I don't have to live in depression. No, I can live for him, and I live to walk in newness of life. And that we would all walk away more thankful, indeed, for each other, for one another, as Eastford Baptist Church, as the family of God that he has given to us. And again, that that thankfulness would indeed come out as we love one another throughout the year, and that we would indeed see that a little bit more as we share a meal in just a little bit. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to invite both Sawyer and Pam to come forward, and uh, we'll hear their testimonies at this time. So would you bow with me? Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this word today. I thank you, God, for believer's baptism and all that it represents. Oh, Lord, God, I, I praise you for, uh, God, the fact that you have given us this object lesson, Lord, you have given us this, this, uh, this amazing ordinance, God, which displays in such a vivid way all that you have done for us. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you that he went to the cross and that upon that cross he paid for every single one of the sins of all those who would come to him in saving faith. And Lord, I would pray today that if there be any here today that don't know you as personal Savior, Lord, if they don't know today that their home would be heaven if they were to die, Lord, if they don't know today that their sins have been washed away, Lord, that you would save their soul today, that today would be the day of salvation. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'd move in hearts today. Lord, use this message. Lord, use your gospel to be able to save, Lord, and do that miraculous power, powerful work, God, that you promised to do. But Lord, I do thank you so much that as we're going to hear in just a moment, God, that that powerful work is real. Lord, as we hear what you have done in Sawyer's life, as we hear what you have done in Pam's life, God, that we would just, just glory in that miracle of salvation. God, that if you can save sinners such as me and Sawyer and Pam, God, you can do it for anyone. God, you can save anyone. And so, Lord, I pray, God, that we would stand in awe of that today. And, Lord, indeed, as we witness, Lord, their being baptized, God, in their obedience, God, that our hearts would be pricked in our own lives, God, in areas where we might need pushing in terms of our own obedience. Lord, perhaps there's one here today who is yet to be baptized. They proclaim Christ as Savior. Lord, they know him. Uh, Lord, they've been living for him, but Lord, they have yet to follow him in this area of, of being baptized. Lord, I pray that you would convict them. And Lord, that perhaps even today after service, Lord, that they'd come and talk to me and and desire to be baptized, Lord. We'll fill the tank up again, Lord. You know this. Uh, but, Lord, I pray, God, that they would follow you in this, in this amazing ordinance, Lord, I pray. But, Lord, I pray ultimately that you would unify us as a body of Christ, as a family of believers here, God, through all that you've done for us in Christ. And may Christ always be the standard. May he always be uh, what unifies us, Lord, as a local church. And so, Lord, I pray that you bless these testimonies, bless these baptisms. In the matchless name of Jesus, amen.